First Credit Union Hotline is a man who is known to yell a time or two, BYU offensive line coach Eric Mateos. As he approaches his second season in that position, Eric, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. What's up, everybody? And what I'm a guy that's known to yell now. <laughs> well, you were yelling in the affirmative and positive yesterday because your Kansas City Chiefs are back in the Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years. How are you feeling about it? Uh... You know, a lot of positive vibes, pretty stoked, really happy for the city of Kansas City, and uh, a lot of fans have waited for this for a long time. So I'm just I'm really excited for all the people that have supported the team over the years. Certainly exciting for the city, exciting for Cougar fans, because a Cougar will win the Super Bowl. Obviously, you have a vested interest in Andy Reid, Andrew Reid, and uh, <laughs> Daniel Sorensen in this. How do you feel about the BYU connection to this? I think it's I think it's great. You know, it's funny um, to see the the impact that former players are having in the NFL is really really enjoyable. Um, that's always one of the funnest, uh, most fun parts about coaching college football. Seeing guys go on and have success, and maybe some guys are have you know I know uh, Dirty Dan uh, was undrafted, and I think now he's what six or seven years in. So. When you see guys that are having uh, longevity as well, that's it's just so cool to see. I love the connections. I love Coach Reed, and I loved him even before I worked at BYU. So it's uh, it's really cool. So, Jeremy and I had an interesting conversation about Andy Reed and if he needs to win the Super Bowl to validate his career. Where do you stand in that conversation, Eric? Oh, well, you're talking to a coach, so the word validate, I don't know if that really resonates with me because – Coach Reed is one of the most respected coaches in the NFL. You could go to any head coach in the NFL. What do you think about Andy Reed? They all love him. They respect him. Uh, all of his players love uh, playing for him. And I'm pretty sure he's top 10 all-time postseason wins. Got a great all-time winning percentage over 600. So I don't know that the win will validate it. I think it'll put a nice uh, cherry on top of a great career. I know he won one Super Bowl as an assistant. But uh yeah, this would be this would be huge for him, but I don't know that it in the long run it changes uh it changes for him. It might uh, it might help push him into the Hall of Fame. I know that. That that that's probably the the biggest thing that's on the table, I would guess. Yeah, I would love for there not to be a verbal asterisk with him. So exactly. if he wins yeah. the Super Bowl, that's just gone, right? That that'd be awesome. So there's Daniel Sorensen. I agree. Yeah. There's Fred Warner on the other side. Uh, it's going to be a fun Super Bowl, certainly. Let's talk about your guys, the offensive line. So looking at the two deep in the bowl game in Hawaii, you had zero seniors. Uh, Thomas Schoff, a guy that got hurt, he graduated, right? So you're bringing back a lot of dudes. How do you feel about the 2020 offensive line? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think we have uh, good, uh, good pieces in place. We'll get some guys back that um, spent a lot of time injured. During the season, I'm really excited to get those guys back into work again. Still a couple that are working through some injuries. You know, we missed, um, you know, we didn't have Joe Tukawafu for the last three three games of the season to either. So, um, And he moved to O-line then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe moved to O-line during uh, our second bye week. And we just said, you know, let's let this man be who uh, God intended him to be, which is that it's a big, heavy man. <laughs> rather, than, rather, rather than fight it the other way, let's just say, hey, we just said, hey, Joe, let's let's just let you be 295 pounds and go block people. So <laughs> excited to have him too. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this off season. The guys uh, seem to be very focused on uh, their winter goals. So. Can't wait to get going back once recruiting's over. Are you more excited about the Chiefs or the offensive line that you're going to bring back, Coach? Um, I think short-term Chiefs, long-term the boys. Ooh, the nice boys, answer. Uh, yeah, well, you know, you ha I had to. <laughs> so, I, I, lo I love our players. I'm excited to have uh, a lot of guys back and that are eager and hungry, but this is also really cool, especially with the Royals success uh, a little bit earlier in the decade um this is it's a really cool cool time for the 
for the, for yeah. the city. And they won a World Series without cheating. How about yeah, that? They didn't steal signs that we know <laughs> yeah. of, so that's good. Sold, right? sold zero signs. Can confirm. <laughs> sold no signs. No, no buzzers on players. That was weird. Yeah. Um, nope. Let's let's talk about uh, the the O line and what you mentioned the the winter goals. So what are you what are you guys up to right now in terms of uh, weightlifting and conditioning and whatnot? Right. So well, I, we let the guys um, in our unit they come up with their goals. So you know I don't we don't like we we're not even close to making our our 2020 season goals right now. We're focused on the winter. That being said. Um, Doing extra is a huge theme for us, you know, not not just the allotted time that they're in the weight room or in the conditioning program, but what they're doing outside of those parameters, uh, getting in there more, doing extra, whether it's in the morning before class or at night, uh, getting in different types of uh, things like yoga and, uh, and then working on technique individually. And, and one of the themes really for the O-line uh, that, that everybody agreed on was bring a buddy. And what that means is, you know, if you're going to do extra and you're motivated to do extra, make sure you bring somebody with you. And, and that's, uh, that's been really neat to see. They've already been doing that. And, and that's, that's really what this semester is about is just doing a little bit more. And because if you just do the status quo, you're going to get status quo results in my opinion. So I think everybody's on board with that. And that's kind of the theme for, for this semester right now. Eric Mateos with us on BYU Sports Nation, BYU Offensive Line Coach. You mentioned recruiting and being on the road. Coach, is that where you are right now? Yeah, I'm down in uh, I'm in Phoenix right now. Yep. Okay, and uh, what's priority number one for bolstering your unit? Well, you know, we're actually in really good shape numbers-wise. We're actually, we might even be a little bit over uh, numbers for the fall. Uh, what we're trying to do right now this month is there's there's one or two guys out there still for the offensive line. We're trying to add a, a trying to add a, another tackle piece into the unit, and um, obviously with uh, missions, there's a lot of forethought. And getting started this week, I'm going to evaluate several guys in the next class. Uh, so that's kind of the perk of early signing day is you get you get half your class almost most of your class handled. So there's really one more player uh, I'm trying to add to the O-line for the 2020 class, but I'm also going out and evaluating 2021 graduates so we can get kind of a, a head start on that. Coach, great to catch up with you. We wish you safe travels on the road. And let it be known, he only yells positive things, people. Good vibes only, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach.